Mm. It's the best mango I've ever eaten in my life. We've been in California for six days now. And it's been amazing. Sorry, chickens in the background. You guys saw the first part of our vacation on my last video. Those are just the highlights of what we did. There was lots of driving involved too. Lots of planning, like, what are we gonna do today? Stuff like that. And then after that, we spent a couple days in LA with family and I didn't vlog a whole lot of that. Mostly because we were with family and I didn't wanna be that obnoxious person with the camera attached to their hand the entire time. And honestly, documenting everything 24 seven is just not natural to me. I like to enjoy the moment, put my phone down, put the camera down, not have to worry about getting the perfect shot or whatever and just enjoy the moment. So this whole process has been a learning process for sure. It's been great. I love doing it. I'm so glad that I have this to look back on in the future, but I definitely could never be a daily vlogger. Could never be Casey Neistat. I have no idea how he does it. It would drive me insane. So this is me trying my best to document everything I can, but I kind of wanted to sit down and tell you about what we've been doing because I haven't been documenting a ton. So I wanted to add some commentary to some of the clips I'm about to show you. So our time in LA was great. Uh, we spent so much of it driving and in traffic, especially because it was Labor Day weekend. So in LA, we stayed with Tim's cousins Jen and Pat, and it was great. They live right by LAX airport and about 10, 15 minute drive from Manhattan Beach. And we get there, we unload our stuff, and then we um, go get some lunch at this place called Stuff I Eat in, Ir uh, where is it? Not Irvine. Um, oh my God, what is it called? Shit, I don't remember, but some, some place in LA, some neighborhood in LA. And this place was so good. So it's vegan, it's all vegan soul food. And you go in and it's a very non-pretentious, no frills type of restaurant. There's no servers, um, nothing is like super overly fancy or like super over decorated. It's just like very straightforward. You go up to the counter, you order your food and then they bring it out to you. And it was so good. Tim got the Nut Burger. <laughs> Great name, I know, the Nut Burger. Um, but it's one of their most popular items on their menu. He loved it. Um, and then I got like this big nacho salad that was huge and so filling. And that was even like the small size. They have a family size that's even bigger. It had a bunch of mixed greens and chips and this cashew nacho cheese sauce and veggies, some kale, some black beans, and then I think like a tempeh tofu um, seasoned like ground beef or whatever. It was amazing. Definitely recommend going there and it's pretty inexpensive as well. So after we did stuff I eat, I forget what we did for the rest of the day, but then around like evening time, like five or six, we, oh, I know what we did. We tried to drive down the Pacific Coast Highway and that leads to Malibu. And the Pacific Coast Highway is, it's what you see in like a bunch of movies and TV shows where the highway goes right by the coastline. And it's like beautiful, beautiful scenery. You just like can look out the ocean, the beach is there. It's amazing. And it goes into Malibu. so. It's a holiday weekend, Labor Day, so traffic is insane. This is our first time experiencing LA traffic, so it takes forever to get anywhere. Like, it will take you at least 45 minutes to an hour to get anywhere you wanna get to, which is really obnoxious. So, we are on our way to the Pacific Coast Highway, Malibu, and we weren't able to make it or drive all the way through into Malibu because 
there was just too much traffic and we had to meet um, our family at, pipe down chickens. We had to meet our family at a little restaurant in Manhattan Beach called Rice, which was really good. It's like a little sushi bar, Japanese place. They have lots of vegan options. And um, so we end up turning around. Oh my God. We make it to Manhattan Beach and Manhattan Beach, if you guys haven't been, please go. It is breathtaking. It's like my, when I think of, Oh, your dream house, your dream place to live, like when you're older and no cares in the world. I would think of Manhattan Beach because it is like the perfect blend of city, beach town, but not like lazy, wear flip flops all the time beach town, but like a little bit classier. The beach is gorgeous and they have these like so the houses are kind of look like apartments or like brownstones in a big city. So they're close together. And then they have these like alleyways that lead down to the beach. And there's like a huge incline because it's like hilly. And you look down these alleyways and it is so breathtaking because you see like the sun and the beach and everything just like down the alleyway. It is it's phenomenal definitely definitely go there and they have the cutest shops and restaurants and it's like I guess the best way to describe it is it's a mix between it's a mix between the Hamptons a really hopping beach town and like a little spice of New York City vibe ish in a way I don't know I don't know if I'm describing it the right way I only spent a night there so I'm sorry if I'm not doing it justice but just go there went back to Jen and Pat's for the night and then we got up and the next day we explored West Hollywood we finally were able to go to Gracias Madre which was so good the thing that I loved about it is that the food tasted really authentic they make their own tortillas all the sauces were really good everything was so filling delicious lots of flavor Definitely recommend going, and it's a gorgeous restaurant. It's just beautiful to look at, beautiful to be in. They have an outdoor area for you to sit in. It's a great place to have a birthday party. They have brunch. It's just very LA, very West Hollywood, um, and I was all about that life. As our appetizer, we got these sweet potato tacos with the cashew sour cream and this like salsa verde and toasted pepitas. And then um, for our entree, oh no, no, we got, we got um, a salad too. They had a special salad with grilled mission figs, arugula, mixed greens, toasted almonds, and then this grilled bread with like a cashew cheese spread on top, which was really, really good and really refreshing. Uh, and then what did we get for our entrees? Oh, Tim got this uh, chimichanga, which is basically a deep fried burrito can't go wrong with that. I had beans, potatoes, veggies in the middle, and then it was topped with like a nacho cheese sauce, pico de gallo, cilantro. And then I got these um, flautas, which are basically like tostitos, or toquitos, whatever the hell you call them. They're like rolled up little mini burritos. And mine had just like potatoes, and I think that was all, just seasoned potatoes. And mine were topped with cashew sour cream, and I also got their, um, tempeh chorizo which was really good and it had black beans on the side it was it was really good really flavorful so filling and then we had to get dessert because you know we went all out on this on this trip to uh gracias madre we got their brownie sundae which is a brownie with uh coconut vanilla bean ice cream on top and coconut bacon and i think like coconut whipped cream too and then a mezcal caramel sauce that was so good that was probably my favorite thing it was amazing and they have all these lattes and coffee drinks and they have you know all the dairy-free creamers and milks which is really nice like everything was vegan i think they have honey in a couple things but that's pretty much it and they had like fresh pressed juices and all of the amazing things in life. So we went hard, we went hard there. We were really full. So then after that, we, what do we do? 
Then I think we like stopped at a couple other places in West Hollywood that we wanted to see. We went back to Jen and Pat, chilled for a little bit, recharged. I started editing my video. Then we went to Venice because we really wanted to walk on the beach and see that area. And it was amazing. We loved it. The boardwalk is awesome. I love people watching. That's like one of my favorite things to do. So Venice Beach, that area, perfect for that. There's every walk of life. It's great. The beach was breathtaking. We had to, par finding parking was kind of a nightmare. It took us about 30, 40 minutes to find parking. It was packed. So we finally found parking. We walked. To get to the beach, we had to walk behind all of these um, houses that had like a little um, stretch of water going through the back of them. And it was the cutest thing ever. These houses were adorable. They were all very unique and cute. And their backyard was like a little river thing, or I don't even know what you call that, the little thing of water. And they have like little boats. You can just go on a boat in your backyard, Dawson's Creek style, but way more glamorous, and just have a little fun date. Go down the water a little bit. You can go under the bridges, and it was so cute. So we finally made it to Venice Beach. We walked on the beach a little bit, and then we walked on the boardwalk a little bit, <clears throat> found this really awesome Mediterranean spot, um, cheap food. They had a cute little backyard area with a bonfire going. Then we went home and the next day we went to Fleet Week. LA had their first ever Fleet Week. Um, so basically you could like go on all of the military grade um, ships and take a tour of everything. Most of, some of them were free, and then there were some that cost money. Oh, shit. The lines were really long. It was kind of obnoxious waiting around for everything, but it was cool spending time with everyone, because that side of the family is the side of the family that we don't see very often, so it was cool to, like, hang out with them, talk with them, catch up. Um, so I really enjoyed that, but waiting in line, going through the ships and stuff, not really my thing. I don't like, I like doing things that aren't super, super touristy when I go to a new place. I like to experience the city like a local would. And that felt just like very touristy because, you know, you had to wait in line. And then, I mean, it's just like, it wasn't very fulfilling to me. Not my thing. I'm not a big history buff. I'm not big. I don't know a ton about the military or none of my family was in the military it was just kind of like eh. but it was cool to hang out with everyone they had food trucks right by the where everyone was they had a really awesome band actually that had it, it was playing like versions of uh contemporary songs but in like a doo-woppy 40s 50s style because that's the time period that the ships were kind of up and running the cool part about going on the ships that I really did appreciate is um, it was kind of like going back in time to the 40s and 50s and seeing how they lived, what kind of things they uh, valued. It was just cool to transport to that day and time on those ships and see how they lived and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed that and that band kind of like set the tone for all of that. So then we grabbed some lunch with the fam before we left, stopped by Irvine to visit some friends, and then we headed back to San Diego, and we came to our new Airbnb, which is where I'm at now, and it is amazing. If you guys are ever in San Diego, um, check out Kyle and Paige's place um, on Airbnb. Definitely stay here for a few nights. It's in the North Park area of San Diego, so it's right by all of the cool spots in town, all of the cool restaurants and bars and stuff like that. And their house is amazing. You walk in and you get a whole like little house to yourself, which is cool. Normally, most Airbnbs, if you're trying to save money anyway, the cheaper ones, you stay in the actual house that the owners or the renters 
live in. So you share a bathroom, you share like a living space, and um, sometimes it can be a little awkward at times, but hey, it's cheaper than paying for a hotel, and it's just more fun. But this place is awesome because you get your own space. They have um, a little like back house with a big bed that's really comfy. They have a shower, a bathroom, a sink. They have dishes for you to make food. They have a microwave, they have a mini fridge. They have a freaking outdoor theater that you can watch movies on. They have a projector screen that comes down. Tim and I have watched um, a couple of movies while we've been here. We had to take advantage of it. We watched Straight Outta Compton and The Intern. And they have chickens. Apparently that is just a California thing. Everyone has chickens here. I don't understand. So we've been staying at Kyle and Page's for the past couple nights and it's been great. I love that you get your own space here. You even get your own table to eat breakfast at. They have hammocks everywhere. It's just, it's good times all around. So after our first night here, the next morning, we got up so early. We got up at 5 a.m. so we could hike Potato Chip Rock. And Potato Chip Rock is a rock that is shaped like an actual potato chip. And it's really thin, it kind of juts out a little bit, and you can go climb it and stand on top of it. Everyone gets pictures with it. And Potato Chip Rock is in Poway, California, Poway County. And I forget the name of the trail, but you can choose to do either the four mile trail or the two mile trail. So if you do the four mile trail, it is obviously eight miles round trip. Two mile is four miles round trip, but the two mile one is like really intense. It's like uphill the entire time, a really high incline. The uh, four mile one is a little bit more scenic. You have a couple of breaks in between where it's not like going up a hill like this the entire time. It definitely is intense, so if you're not in great shape, if you haven't worked out in a year or two, maybe work up to it and eventually hike it, or just hike part of it and then walk back down, but um, I definitely recommend hiking it when you are able to get all the way to the top and see Potato Chip Rock because it's really great. It's beautiful. The whole, the whole time you are looking out on amazing scenery, all these great rocks, there's so many places to get up and take pictures and overlook the entire landscape. We had a lot of fun hiking up that. And I definitely recommend going early in the morning because the entire trail doesn't have any shade. So if you go early in the morning, you can hike up most of the way before the sun rises and you don't have sun beating down your back while you're hiking this pretty intense trail. I don't think I'd be able to do it or have the desire to hike up that entire trail if the sun was beating down on me the entire time. So we got up at five. It's about a 30, 40 minute drive from the San Diego North Park area. So we drove there, we used the bathroom before we started, and then we started actually walking and hiking around 6.30 a.m. And I do not get up that early. I'm not a morning person, but I was really glad that we did. It felt good to like wake up early, get your day started early, and get some exercise in. And then when you're done, you still have the entire day left. So you didn't do it in the middle of the day and then all of a sudden it's like four or five o'clock and you're like, wow, where did the day go? So it was a great way to start the day for sure. It was a little bit chilly. We had like long sleeves on and hiking kind of warmed you up, but you weren't too hot. We saw the sunrise over the mountains and the rocks, and the, we saw the lighting change from really dim to bright, which was really cool. And we also didn't have a ton of people walking on the trail with us. We saw a few people come down, um, but no one else was walking with us up the trail which was great. So it was kind of like our own private hike, which is awesome. And it was really romantic. I definitely, uh, definitely think you guys should go early in the morning. So we hiked all the way up. We weren't rushing. We stopped every now and then to have a snack, to have a drink of water, to step out on some rocks and get really cool views and pictures. 
And um, then we finally made our way up to Potato Chip Rock. And the other great thing about doing it early is that no one else is waiting in line to get on the actual Potato Chip Rock. A lot of the times, if you read online, people say that they wait in line for like 30, 40 minutes uh, waiting to get a picture and climb on top. But there was no one else up there. It was just us. So we were able to climb on top, get our picture, have our little moment. And as soon as we were done taking pictures and coming down off of Potato Chip Rock, that's when other people started to file in. So we definitely made good time right before a bunch of people started coming. And then after like, we spent a, like a little bit of time up there and after like 20, 30 minutes, there were a bunch of people up there, like 15, 15 ish people. Oh, you can also take your dogs there. So if you have a dog who's really active, who likes to do stuff like that, definitely take them on the trail with you. It'll wear them out for the entire day. So we got back from Potato Chip Rock, took a two or three hour nap, uh, got some food, went grocery shopping, and we ended up going to dinner at this place. I forget the name of it, but I'll put it on the screen here. It was Vietnamese Thai food, uh, which was pretty good. It was all right. Um, they had lots of vegan vegetarian options and it was so spicy. Like they have you order your dish and then they ask you like, how, what level of spiciness do you want? And it's from one to 10. So you're thinking, okay, level 10 is probably like, wow, that's probably too spicy for me. And level five is like, okay, yeah, that's like a good amount of spice. Um, level three was a lot for me to handle. I got, <laughs> I got level three. It was pretty intense. Tim, unknowingly, got level five and it was unbearably hot. I don't even want to know how spicy level 10 is. It was crazy. So Tim got like a mango curry dish with rice and it comes with, uh, mock chicken they had like mock chicken stuff and it actually wasn't that good I wasn't a huge fan it was kind of mushy and like ooh, I didn't really like it but they make their own tofu there and the tofu was really good and then I got this like pineapple curry dish which is pretty good but just like a little bit too spicy so if you don't like spice ask for like zero and if you like spice ask for like one or level one or two don't go past that then we explored um, different neighborhoods around that area and we found a dog park and it was adorable and then we came home and walked straight out of Compton and just had a chill night. It was pretty great. So yeah, today marks, today is our sixth day here in California. We still have a lot that we want to do. We're going to hit up some beaches today and I'll probably make a third installment of this vlog California series. Um, let me know if you guys like them in the comments below. I'm having a lot of fun, but like I said, documenting everything at all times is not natural for me. So it's a struggle, but it's a learning process and I kind of like it for now. I'm excited to look back on all of these videos and moments and um, yeah. So thanks for coming along the ride with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Yeah, I'm gonna finish this amazing mango and then we're gonna head to the beach.